Thank you to the AAGL for allowing us to present our work, Robotic Resection of Full Thickness Bladder Wall Endometriosis, with Dr. Nicholas Fogelson and fellow Dr. Lee Christensen. Urinary tract endometriosis comprises 1% of cases of endometriosis. It may involve the ureter, bladder, or both. Symptoms may include pain with urination, hematuria, urinary urgency, pelvic pain, and infertility. We present a case involving a 27-year-old woman with primary infertility and stage 4 endometriosis. Previous laparoscopy to drain large endometriomas was performed, but these quickly recurred. She was being considered for IVF, but it was felt that the recurrent large bilateral endometriomas interfered with IVF retrieval, and she was referred for endometrioma treatment prior to IVF. Symptoms included pelvic pain, dyspareunia, as well as cyclic urinary urgency. A previous MRI was evaluated that was ordered prior to her original surgery that demonstrated the bilateral endometriomas. This previous MRI was read out as having bladder wall thickening due to inadequate filling of the bladder, but we read these images and were suspicious that there was more significant bladder wall disease. We ordered a new MRI, this time with rectal, vaginal, and bladder contrast, which now clearly demonstrated transmural endometriosis at the bladder dome. It also showed disease in the anterior wall of the lower sigmoid and in the cecum. The patient was consented for ureteral catheter placement, excision of endometriosis, resection of suspected bladder wall endometriosis, and possible bowel resection. On cystoscopy, the endometriotic disease could be clearly seen coming through the dome of the bladder. As a precaution, five French ureteral catheters were placed bilaterally. Here we see the catheter entering on the right. And similarly on the left, catheters were advanced to 22 centimeters to cover the bladder as well as any upper pelvic ureteral involvement. After docking a da Vinci robot, one could clearly see adherence of the bladder to the anterior uterus in the same position seen on the MRI. There was also advanced pelvic disease that we addressed prior to this that is not addressed in this video. Care is taken to circumscribe the peritoneum far away from the lesion in unaffected tissue so that we can work through bloodless planes and set completely separate the endometriotic lesion from unaffected surrounding tissue. The borders of the lesion are determined visually as well as the visual haptics from the response of the robot against tissues of varying density. As we come around the lesion, a cystotomy is created which actually facilitates complete removal. Once a cystotomy is developed, it is fairly simple to circumscribe around the lesion, removing portions of the bladder dome. The ureteral catheters can be seen, and they are quite far away from this lesion, as we know that we are fairly far from the ureters in the dome of the bladder. In order to minimize thermal damage, we predominantly use high current density cut current with a judicious use of coag current in areas that require more hemostasis. With the lesion fully exposed, it is helpful to circumscribe the bladder mucosa completely around the visible lesion in order that we fully remove the lesion with the resection. The lesion is fully removed. A small edge of indurated tissue is resected. Closure is begun in a vertical fashion with a running suture. The superior apex is anchored with a 2 vicral suture full thickness including bladder mucosa and muscularis. Successive bites are taken in a superior to inferior fashion incorporating all layers with an approximate half a centimeter distance between sutures for a watertight closure.
Once the first layer is completed, we do a second layer from inferior to superior, again with two ovicral suture. Healthy bites of muscularis are gathered in order to pull over the top of the previous incision to ensure a two-layer watertight closure. As we reach the apex of the second layer, we begin to incorporate available peritoneum, which may decrease adhesions in the postoperative period. Once the final closure is complete, a water test was done, filling the bladder with approximately 150 cc's of fluid and no leakage was noted. A Foley catheter was left in place for a week, and after a week, a retrograde cystogram was performed, which showed no leak, after which the Foley was removed. The patient did well and had very little to no postoperative bladder symptoms.